So Michael, thank you for coming in and talking to us today. You're convener, I think, for the Children and Youth at Risk and Urban Education Network. That's right, yeah. Can you tell me, what's the main idea that brings people to your network? Well, I think originally it kind of came together from two parts. So there was the, the at-risk part, looking at kind of social policy and that kind of thing, and then the urban kind of context and seeing, seeing people who are researching in, in cities and in those kind of issues. So it kind of brings together still, you know, 20 odd years on, people from both of those kind of traditions and contexts, really. So what's, I, I guess it changes over time, but what's the main topics which are being raised in your network? There's obviously a, a broad range of topics because it's, it's a broad theme. And it's one of the earlier networks, so it was at a time when things were slightly less specific, possibly. And there are things like disadvantages are always a big theme, so people are interested in uh, children and, and young people who are experiencing disadvantage. Increasingly, um, migration, migrant experiences is something that's come through, particularly in the last three or four years. And resilience seems to be an issue, um, kind of links in with the, the, the risk theme of this conference was having to about how not just children and young people at risk, but how they're dealing with those kind of adversities and you know how policy does or does not help, that kind of thing. Okay. So, of course, this is a, a European Educational mm -hmm. Research Association. So how does your network contribute to European educational research? Well, I suppose, obviously, the, the, the theme, broad as they are, run across kind of different European contexts, but people come from different contexts, different experiences within those European countries. And, and I find you learn an awful lot just by seeing how, how people's experiences in Denmark, for example, are different from in Spain, or we had a, a presentation from Israel earlier on today. And all the, there are lots of overlapping interests and, and issues, but that you can see how that, that concept of risk is, is kind of played out differently in different areas. And then, I suppose, leading on from that, what does your network really value in terms of educational research, uh, and how does it benefit society? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think one of the initial kind of impetuses behind the network was to get away from the kind of school effect and the school improvement way of things, which was, you know, at that time particularly, um, heading towards a do this and you will get these kind of outputs kind of model. Um, the good thing about, I think, the, the network that, that, as it's been is that it looks at other factors, so it looks beyond that. And that means not just being tied to a particular methodology, but often there's people talking about mixed methodologies, or we have people coming together from a, a, a quantitative um, tradition and, and talking to people who are much more ethnographic. So I think that, that breadth is also breadth is also there in terms of methodology and you get interesting conversations because of that. Yeah and of course uh, as you will know the ERA has a, a broad mission statement. Mm -hmm. How do you relate your work to that mission statement? Well I think it's, it's again it comes back to uh, researching across contexts looking at the different factors that affect education because you know we know a lot of the people that, that are involved in the network, they're not just looking at schools or looking at higher education, they're looking about at how learning works beyond that. So non-traditional forms of education, alternative education. So it's, it's, it's looking at, 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 the, at education in its kind of broadest sense, I suppose, which is something that, that um, ESA values, as far as I can see. Yes, absolutely. Now, do you, are you connected to other national networks, other organisations outside Europe? Um, I mean, individuals are connected, so I suppose there's individuals connected to their, their national organisations. Um, the, I mean, it tends to be because because we're focusing on, on the kind of marginalised and, and the, the disadvantaged there are the national associations that deal so they, the, with the particular those particular groups. So it's it's you know it's people bringing their own connections, networks, and that kind of thing, rather than being connected to individual organisations. Okay. Mm -hmm. Say someone's watching this video and they've never been to ECR before, mm -hmm. and they're thinking, that sounds pretty interesting, but they've got to write a proposal. So, what would you be looking for in a proposal for the ECR conference? Um, I suppose, I mean, in a proposal, we're looking for we're looking for an interesting area, really. So, something that links into the network, but has that's something that may not have been researched in that way, um, or maybe a group that hasn't been researched in that way before. But then obviously at the same time it needs to be a robust research proposal, so actually based on um, empirical evidence and data collection. Um, and then some kind of, even if tentative, some kind of view of what, what the potential findings or outcomes are. 
so we can we can judge because what we do you know what would be unfortunate is people with interesting ideas and interesting research failing because they haven't they haven't given us the kind of information that we need so uh, we're quite supportive of that but we, but we also need that, that kind of balance between innovation and uh, kind of empirical robustness so you're the network convener mm -hmm. have a, a think back over the last two or three years is there one thing you've done that you're really proud of um, well, I've I've been kind of the co-convener co until till now, so I've been helping rather than kind of <laughs> running the network. So, um, I mean, I think one thing that, that has come up over the last couple of conferences is is being able to respond to policy uh, kind of areas and and research themes that that have, have appeared. So one thing that that's suddenly seems two or three years ago seemed to come out of nowhere, possibly out of English kind of language context, was the word vulnerable and vulnerability. And we spent a lot of time talking about what that means, because it's a much abused word, I think, in terms of research and, and policy. And it seems to have gone into different cultures and different languages, but having conversations about what that means and how that plays out, particularly for, for, for children and young people who are you know, labelled with that, that kind of term, has been really interesting. And you see, actually, that this is, it, it's, a, it's a way of getting a, a more nuanced perspective on, on something that risks becoming a cliche or dismissed for being, I oh, know we don't want to talk about that, that as a word. So it's that, you know, that kind of theoretical discussion is really valuable, I think. Now, of course, it's the first day of the conference today. Mm -hmm. What do you like about the conference? Well, I like, I, I, I like the, read the range of, of people you get here. It's, it's, it seems to get bigger every year. Um, the, the range of presentations seems to get broader. And I think it's kind of, it's it's very friendly without being kind of uh, too cosy, you see what I mean? So it's not like people come and just have a nice time. You have, as I said, interesting and quite rigorous conversations, but it's that kind of that balance of friendliness and talking to people who who, who are researching in, in completely different areas and uh, and different countries. And I think for somebody somebody from the UK, we particularly need to be kind of still linking into to Europe for reasons I won't go into anymore. I do not. <laughs> and what does the conference mean to your network? Um, I think that for our network, the conference means it's it's a chance to get people together because in recent years. We haven't done so much in between the conferences because I think people are just busier than, than ever. I mean, there's been history in the past of doing books. We need to, to, to kind of focus on that, that again. But it's really a case to catch up with people and see actually what have you been up to, where, you know, how are things in, in, what are the pressures like in your country and in your university and that, that kind of thing. So it's, it's that continuity that it gives us. Well, thank you very much for coming and spending your time with us today. Thank you. Thank you.